This is an apple. And this is a PC. But only one of them can play video games. And speaking of playing video games, if you need to activate Windows on your recently built gaming PC, then I got a video sponsor for you. Did you just finish building your brand new gaming PC? You've got Windows installed but not activated and you don't know where to go or what to do? Well, I've got you covered. Head on over to scdkey.com. Link in the description below, an online marketplace that specializes in CD keys to activate Windows 10 and even 11, but also many other game titles and etc. What you'll want to do is select to purchase a Windows 10 or 11 product key, click buy now and apply my promo code during checkout to take advantage of a 25% discount, bringing the total cost to activate your Windows install down under $15. Next, all you got to do is zip on over to your Windows activation screen, click change product key, and just paste in the key received digitally upon purchase. Check through the next activation menu screens and you are done. Now you have a fully licensed and activated copy of Windows on your new system. That is it guys and it is as easy as that. Don't forget to use my promo code, link in the description below to save you some money on your Windows activation. But for now, back to the video. Alrighty guys, so Apple jokes aside, although I think is pretty appropriate for the intro of this video because this is a very small PC and not too far off from the size of your standard Apple. But all that aside, B-Link being the company that asked if I wanted to take a look at this product, set this on over and being that it's such a small form factor, budget style, possibly good for gaming PC, I had to take a look. So let's get the camera closer here and see what this thing is all about. This is the Sur 5 model. I'm not exactly sure what S-E-R or Sur means, but one of their different types of mini PC models specifically can be bought for $339 on their website. And it has some pretty cool options to it. And I'll put out all the tech specs that are available that you can buy if you were to buy this particular model. So let's get this sleeve off here. Next, we've just got this cover to pull off. And then what we got here is just some basic things here, what I guess you would expect, the user manual. So we've got in multiple languages, English, and many others. Hard disk installation guide. I did do a little tad bit of research with this. You can actually add an expansion hard drive into this. So it'd be something that is of laptop form factor or just a like a 2.5 inch SSD. So and then here we have the accessories box. So let's open that up. And we've got a you know standard power cord and the power block that would come with the PC because obviously this is not gonna have an internal power supply that would be kind of wild to expect. Some mounting brackets so you can set this up and you can actually mount this like in a vase mount actually for putting it just like right behind your monitor to really save some desk space which is really cool. Comes with a this is an HDMI cable so you don't have to go out and buy that and I think what is this? This is an, oh, this is like a, another HDMI cable. Let me make sure that other one was an HDMI. Yes, it is just a longer. So this is a very short HDMI cable. Oh yeah, if you're mounting it, like say behind your monitor, there would be no real need to have a long cable. So that's pretty cool that they include that. So you can have that kind of mounting option and then some screws and other things here. This is, oh, this is a ribbing cable for doing that hard drive installation as I mentioned earlier. All right, so that is it for the accessories and the accessory box. So we'll get that out of the way and get to the main meat of what we're after here, which is the PC itself, which as you can see, takes up literally just half of the size of this box. So here we have it guys, pretty sweet looking. It's very well compacted. It's literally about not even, it's smaller than my hand and I actually don't have large hands. So what we got up front here is two USB 3.0, looks like a USB C also as well, power button, and looks like there's actually even a way to reset the CMOS. Some rubber feet. So it does not slip around if you just want to place it on your desk like so. And then in the back here, we've got a LAN port. We've got two other additional USB for other forms of connectivity and two more HDMI as well. And the power where you would actually plug in the power. It looks like we have some ventilation up here too. And looking through it, you can actually see some heat sink. And actually looking on the sides here, it also looks like it's perforated. So yeah, you can kind of see almost through it where it allows for the dissipation of heat. So it's like a pretty well put together product here. It definitely looks like they're trying to keep in mind reducing heat so that way you can maximize your performance. I want to 
open it up if I can. It looks like looking around at it, there's only four screws maybe on the bottom. So let's get a quick little peek inside. Let's see if all we need to do is just undo these four screws here to get inside and take a look. All right, I got a little spudger here in between. Feels like there's a little bit of adhesive that is holding it on. I think I can almost pry it apart. There we go. Okay. There we go, guys. Very compact. That's uh, looks like where we would have our hard drive installed. This looks like just a place to slide that into place. So yeah, so here's our RAM. And I wonder if I can look at the underneath side here as well. Oh yeah, there is some screws here that'll actually pull the motherboard up. So let's take a look at that. Get these four screws out. Here we go. That is everything, guys. So there's still some connections that I'm not going to bother with disconnecting that are attached to the chassis, but this is what it looks like. So on the underside here, this is the fan and the cooler that looks to be placed over the APU, which is, this is an APU. So it's a all-in-one CPU and, and GPU, like those traditional Ryzen APU chips. But yeah, I mean, not a whole lot to look at, but I just wanted to kind of take it apart to get a good look at it. I'm not going to pull the cooler off just because it might be attached with some liquid metal or something like that for the best cooling. So I'm not going to pull that off and have to worry about redoing that. But yeah, on the other side that we pulled up earlier, we've got the RAM that's visible that is simply sodium RAM. So you can just pop it out and replace that with a higher capacity RAM. So this is just two 8 gig crucial DIMMs that we can upgrade later. So I'm going to get that back in there actually. There we go. But yeah, not too much to look at, honestly, guys. And that, that is actually kind of neat. It looks like they got a little bit of cooling material over the NVMe drive, which is a Kingston 500 gig NVMe. So, but then let's get this sucker booted up and just get an idea of what it's like first booting this little mini PC up. Alrighty, guys, we've got everything plugged in. So just do a quick boot test and then really I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time if it's just gonna be like Windows setup stuff and get games installed and get the benchmarks done. But let's just see here, just a quick raw boot up i'm gonna hit the power button here okay i hear a fan spinning up actually I feel it pushing air behind so pretty powerful little fan in there okay there's something b link nice hard to see here i'm just trying to keep track on camera here while looking at my camera view screen Let's see how quick this sucker is nvme drive i imagine it's going to be a pretty quick boot up i'm going to just turn my monitor ever so slightly so i can keep an eye on things just a moment, it says. There we go, the white screen. Okay, this is Windows 11, I forgot to mention that. And this is actually my first experience with Windows 11, so. Looks pretty snappy though, as far as performance goes, at least on initial boot up. This is just basically making you go through your typical first use installation. So it's a raw installation of Windows. You select your language and your time zone, all that stuff. So that's kind of boring stuff. I'm gonna give you what you guys are wanting to see. We're gonna do some raw benchmarks and see just how well this little tiny fit in the palm of your hand PC can do in terms of hitting today's latest games and titles. So onward with the benchmarks.
Alrighty guys, benchmarks are in and I'd have to say I am quite impressed with the performance of this little tiny PC. Many of the titles that we tested were playable within 1080p resolution, lowest settings of course, and if it did struggle I found that actually just simply bumping the resolution down to about 720p made for a gameable, playable experience, albeit not really anything super pretty to look at, but take it at that. So then who is this device really for? Well, if you are on the go, as you can see, pretty simple. It takes up no more space than an Apple and you can tuck this away into a bag and be on your way. Or if you're just simply after the most minimalist desk setup, PC setup that you can possibly put out there. I don't really know how much smaller you can get here. Again, not much bigger than an Apple. But if this device is not really your cup of tea and you'd rather build up yourself your own custom gaming PC, I got a great guide for you right here. Thanks for tuning into this one though. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one.